with firmware version 5.11 for the NanoDeck Recorder Controller, we added a lot of new features to it. One of them being the web server, uh, which essentially gives you the ability to remotely log into the NanoDeck and view the contents uh, of the NanoDeck itself, essentially anywhere in the world. But the caveat to that, however, is anywhere in the world really is dependent on how you set up your network. So real quick, let's take a look at the web server. I've already done a video on this, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. But what I do want to point out is that the web server does give you the ability to look at bar graph data, look at horizontal trends, numeric data, as well as historical data. Now keep in mind that I'm connected to a 192.168.1.18 address. That's an internal IP address that you can't really gain access to outside the network. Now this is fine if you're located on a, you know, a plant uh, workshop, uh, you've got a couple of these and you're wanting to, to view the data uh, in your office for example. This is fine, you shouldn't have an, a problem gaining access to it. And for most uh, people out there, this is, this is very typical and common. But if you want to view the process and you want to view the data remotely, maybe say from your home office, for example, you're going to need to have a way to gain access to it. And that's what this instructional video is going to talk about. Now, in order to gain access uh, to the web server initially, you need to make a quick uh, configuration change to the NanoDeck itself. You can do this all from the front faceplate of the NanoDeck, or if you have iTools, which is free configuration and monitoring software, you can do it very quickly using this. Now, just to kind of show you what's going on here, uh, we've got, we're connected to my NanoDAC, which is 192.168.1.18, and I'm connected via Ethernet. Now, you can also connect uh, via um, uh, configuration clip if desired, uh, but for this example, I am connected over Ethernet. I'm looking at Parameter Explorer, and on the left-hand side, we've got a little folder here called Web Server. Now, again, to, to reiterate, uh, out of the box, the web server is going to be disabled. So if you ch uh, toggle from no to yes, uh, the port and the security parameters will show up. In terms of port, you have two options. You have an option between 80 and an option between 8080. Now, I would recommend leaving on 80. That's your standard HTTP port. And we'll talk about this in a little bit more detail in the next couple minutes. You also have the ability to assign security. When you do this, if you toggle that from no to yes, you essentially are able to um, uh, put a username and a password in associated with the web server. If you're putting this on the network, and especially if you're giving an access outside your network, I'd probably recommend doing this. Keep in mind for this example, I have turned off. That's really all that's needed in terms of setting up the NanoDex. Pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and close this. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to set up our uh, router to be able to accept requests from outside the network. I have a Netgear R6200 um, wireless router. Now, this is the only part that's going to be a little bit difficult to explain simply because every router out there today is a little bit different. Um, all the Netgear routers may follow a similar uh, menu structure, but that may be different between a Linksys, D-Link, or any other um, wireless routers out there. The main thing that you want to focus on and one thing that you want to navigate to is wherever you can find port forwarding. Now, port forwarding essentially tells the router that when a request comes in on a certain port to direct it to that specific device. Um, otherwise, when you have requests coming into your router, your router is going to block them. That's what we call a firewall. Um, it's important that we have them. Uh, it prevents a lot of unwanted access into our network but at the same time can be a little bit of an inconvenience when you're trying to set up things like this. That's why we have port forwarding to hopefully, and, and it does, make the uh, ability to gain access to devices uh, remotely much simpler. Now again, I want to reiterate that your process may be a little bit different, but all I had to do was go to service name and choose HTTP. When I do that, I then associate the IP address uh, that I want the port to be associated to, which would be .18, and I click on the add. When I do that, I get the following right below it. The service name is associated with whatever I choose here. The starting and end port are 80, which again, that's the standard HTTP port. Being that this is a web server that uses a web browser, you can obviously see why we need to use the HTTP uh, port. And then of course the IP address. Now, 
if I were to click on edit service, if I were to select and then click on edit service, I can always go in here, change the name to Nanodeck Web Server. Uh, maybe I can change the port to a different uh, port if I wanted to. For this example, there's really no reason why you need to. And unless you have multiple ports open, uh, I would just set it up as this and leave it as is. Now the next question that I might be asked is, well, how do I gain access to my router in the first place? Well, the IP address to your router is also the same as the gateway. So for example, um, if I were to go back to my uh, command window here, uh, you can also uh, gain access to this by clicking on uh, your start, hitting command, and IP config. This default gateway is 192.168.1.1. I am on the that particular network. Anything uh, from 2 to 255 is all in the same subnet. So my IP address is six. The IP address of the NanoDeck is dot eighteen. Now that's what you can see. We're all talking on the same network. So as you see on the address bar on the very top here, I'm connected to 192.168.1.1. It may ask you for a user login and password. If you've never gone into here before, uh, chances are it's probably not set up. I can't tell you what the user login and password would be by default, but if you do a quick search, uh, chances are you can probably figure it out pretty quickly. Um, so that being said, that's pretty much all that's needed uh, in terms of setting up the router. Again, keywords are port forwarding and the port needs to be 80. So now that I've done that, um, let's talk about how I actually connect to my IP address. More importantly, what is the IP address coming in to my house, coming into my router? Well, there's a lot of ways to figure this out. If you were to go back to your home screen of your router, chances are somewhere on the main screen it's going to tell you where your IP address is. As you see, mine is right here. I've got part of it, the part of the IP address blocked off for security reasons, but uh, that is one place where it's going to tell you what your IP address is. You can also go to whatismyipaddress.com and it should automatically detect what your IP address is. So keep in mind that you know anytime from outside your network, you are identified as that particular IP address. It's not the 192 address. That's why you can't gain access to it. You actually have to talk to that specific IP address. So that being said, what we should be able to do is type in uh, 7575 and the rest of the IP address and connect to the router, or I'm sorry, connect to the web server. So let's go ahead and close this down real quick. We'll get rid of that. Let's go ahead and change to another network. I'm gonna go ahead and change to another network. This is a 4G connection. This is a cellular connection right now. And just to verify that we are indeed on a different network, let's just type in what is my IP address again. And as you see, a 198.228 address, that's definitely a different IP address, a uh, different network. So I'm on a different network now, and now I should theoretically be able to type in the IP address of my um, of the IP address going into my house, uh, and I should be able to connect directly to the NanoDAX. So let's test this out real quick. And as you can see, by putting in the IP address uh, of the router going into my house, uh, it knows that any uh, outside request to that specific protocol will be geared towards this NanoDeck. And as you can see right now, just like before, I can look at the bar graph data. I can look at horizontal trends, numeric data, etc. So that's pretty much about it. That's all that's really needed. Um, it's, it's actually more straightforward than I think a lot of people um, think that it is. We keep in mind port forwarding is what you want to focus on. Now if you want to take this one step further, let's say that we don't necessarily want to associate an IP address anymore. Um, maybe we want to keep that somewhat secret. Well there are services out there that give you the ability to uh, associate that IP address to a name. Uh, we also call this as being DNS, Dynamic Name Servers. Now when you connect to google.com or any other website like eurotherm.com, you're actually uh, typing in uh, you're typing in the address, but that goes to a uh, server called a DNS server and that's doing the translation of the, the wording to the IP address. Uh, you can only imagine how difficult it would be if you had to try to memorize IP addresses instead of words. 
Um, so with that being said, we can kind of do the same concept with this. Now, there's a lot of services out there. Um, DYN, uh, DNS.org is a great service. They used to offer a free service, but now uh, they do uh, charge on a monthly basis. The benefit to that, however, is that with that service, it can keep track of your IP address for you. What I mean is usually um, home IP addresses will change over time. You're not always going to have the same address. The one that I've uh, shown for this video may not be the same a month from now. So you can see why it's, it's kind of nice to have your router linked to the service because as your IP address changes, that will automatically be changed to your address as well. And, and whatever you type in as far as your um, URL will remain the same as well. But uh, being that the, uh, the case, uh, we're not really using that for this example. Um, what I do want to show you, however, is the um, ability to create a DNS account. Uh, so for example, instead of typing in 7575, etc. as my IP address, I can create a URL um, instead. So for example, uh, there's a website called changeip.com. Um, this is a free service. Um, you can donate it if you so choose. But um, essentially what this gives you the ability to do is to create a, uh, a name associated to an IP address. So once you create a free account, you can go down and look at domain names. Um, as you can see right here, mine is jclark.onmypc.org. You're going here and click on edit. It's probably going to ask me for a password. It does. So I can go in here and I've got three different uh, URLs. Basically, jclark.onmypc.org followed by an FTP and a www. Uh, what you do is you take this and you tell the service that I want to associate this URL with this IP address. So just to kind of quickly test this out, if we were just to simply copy this address paste it it does the exact same thing as going to the IP address numerically by doing this now again there, there's not a whole lot of benefit to this As a matter of fact if you look at it uh, jclark.onmypc.org is actually longer than typing in the IP address but it's simple to remember um, again, key thing to this, your IP address does change over time, so keep that in mind. You may want to keep an eye on it on a monthly basis. Um, or if you want to do a paid subscription, uh, you can use the other service I was talking about, and it will keep track of it for you. It's very simple. That's really connecting to it uh, remotely. That, that's really all that's needed. It's very simple, very straightforward. Um, and again, keyword is port forwarding in 80.